let's try to talk through a little bit of a conceptual what-if scenario that puts together different pieces from chapter 6 and prior. Let's say that I have a Gaussian wave packet that is about to hit a barrier. What's going to happen? So th there's a few things we need to think about now. We've talked about how barriers and individual energy states relate, or individual momentum states, and we've talked about how wave packets are made up of a bunch of different states. And now we have to think a little more about time evolution. So in the scenario where we were thinking about individual energy or momentum states, we kind of had a steady state situation. Like after a really long time, if we keep sending in basically the same wave, what happens? Now it's a little bit different. So there's a few different pieces, and I'm not going to do anything that out mathematically. I'm just going to use some of the reasoning that we've met so far. So the first thing is to recognize that if I have a Gaussian wave packet, that means I've actually added up a bunch of different momentum states, right? So if I have this in position space, we know that also means I have this in momentum space. So if I have a Gaussian distribution of different momenta, that means I have a bunch of different energies. And so in this case, we'll assume that it's not like an average value of zero. We'll assume that there is, in fact, some average value. And if we correlate that, that to then E0, I can say, OK, maybe E0 is here. So now let's think about how those lower energy momenta, right, are they're going to be below the well more and more. That those higher energy momenta are in fact going to be a closer to the top of the well, and then some of them will be above the well. So this is actually quite a hard scenario to think about. We wouldn't necessarily do this mathematically. So the other thing to notice is that if I say, okay, my wave packet starts here, and we can say that it has net motion to the right because, hey, there is an average value of momentum. Well, there's a problem with this, is that it doesn't necessarily stay nicely together as one wave packet. Now, and I've drawn it this way. I haven't necessarily drawn it, you know, that way. But we can think about it either way. So as this is moving, in fact, these different components are going to be traveling differently. And depending on how you build your wave packet, that often looks like the wave package just kind of slooshing out So as it moves to the right. So it doesn't necessarily stay one nice little wave packet and march to the right in a coherent way. It loses some of that coherence. So already, if this is kind of t equals zero, at some you know t later time, it's already maybe a little bit smushed. I've drawn it lower for space reasons, not, not otherwise. OK, so, so then what's going to happen is sometime later, we have something moving backwards. I'm kind of showing time going down. We're, we're going to have later some mess going backwards. And we're going to have some mess going forwards, which is largely going to be our high frequency components. Right, so when we think about the, and when I say high frequency, you can say, kind of say wavelength, right? So these have your short wavelength, these have your long wavelength. So what's confusing is, of course, that we have lots of different terms here, because I've drawn this as a continuous distribution. So it's really difficult to predict exactly what it's going to look like. But as this becomes decoherent going back, you're really going to see those longer terms dominated, because those are going to be mostly what's reflected. And then what's transmitted is mostly your higher energy stuff. So when we see our wave, our wave packet come out, it's actually going to be mostly the higher energy, higher momentum, shorter wavelength components. So this is actually something you can go into the simulation and play with. Um, one of the, the FET simulations has the ability to work with this. And you can really see this happen in time. So this is, this is something valuable to do and to just understand that you're seeing many different things happen at once. And again, we can kind of see mathematically where each of those are, but then conceptually, we can do this out at a point where the math would really be too hard. I would, if I had to do this mathematically, that's what computers are for, I wouldn't do this by hand.